daddy came here and goes, Oh my God, son, you're sick. What can I get you? I go, Dad, I love Punani. <laughs> my dad went to the Jamaican store. <laughs> hey, lady, where's your Punani? <laughs> my son is at me right now. Give me two. I said, right, let me feed it. No, no, no deep. All right. Uh, <laughs> that was our old school giggle. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Brawls, Panties, and Sports. First lady, we're ready for what you say. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Each week we try to figure out what is going on in the sports world. Not the plays of the week, more like the players of the week. Are they trying to tell us something? So we ask, what you saying? Fly, little birdie, fly. Time keeps on slipping into the future. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. So I want to fly like an eagle to the sea. Fly like an eagle. Let the spirit carry me. I want to fly. Fly right into the future. The little birdies, known as the Sacramento Kings, let hmm. Boogie Fever fly the coop so he can be doing the butt in New Orleans. Boogie could not wait to flap his little wings and strap his seat belt on as he merrily got on that big jetliner and got the hell out of Sacramento. <laughs> the Pelicans, by all accounts, got the better of the deal, and many in the NBA are scratching their heads and are starting to ask the question, who has the worst management, the New York Knickerbockers or the Sacramento Kings? Are the Kings and Knicks simply symptomatic of the lack of truly highly quality players in today's NBA? <laughs> Scotty P. Pippen, Bruce Lee, Bernie Mac, do the right thing, and the Steve Miller band are asking, what you saying? Well, let, let's, let's just look at this trade. Like, on the surface, yes, the Kings look like they gave Boogie Cousins away for nothing. I mean, we know that Tyreek Evans is a good player when he's healthy, but he hasn't been – he's always injury prone, so he hasn't been healthy for a long time. They also got Langston Galloway. Well, he's a solid rotational player. But the trade really is going to depend on how would Buddy Heal be in the future. We don't know what he is now. I mean, he's a decent player, but he's young. He's a rookie. So it depends on what Buddy Heal can be in the future. And my analogy to this trade is like the Memphis Lakers trade when they when uh, Memphis traded Powell Gasol to the Lakers. Mm. If you're ever young, remember that trade. That trade was, they say, oh, wow, the Lakers got the best of the Memphis. But remember one thing, Marcus Saul was part of that trade. He was very young. And we know it was a good trade for both teams because Memphis still has Marcus Saul. The Lakers don't have Pau Gasol. Even though they won two championships with Pau Gasol, but Memphis got Marcus Saul, and it ended up being a good trade. So right now, I really can't judge the Kings on that trade because many executives, they didn't want to go after Boogie Cousins because of his bad temperament. So they didn't have that many buyers. So at least, at least give the Kings some credit that they were able to trade him for something. I mean, let's look at OKC. They got absolutely nothing for Kevin Durant. So they, <clears throat> oh, so Kansas, the Kings did not want to pay Boogie Cousins, $200 million when he became a free agent. So get rid of him before you owe him all that money. So, okay. But let's look at the Kings and the Knicks. Yeah, they have bad management, and God knows we know the New York Knicks have bad management. I mean, let's, Phil Jackson, Phil Jackson can't even get to dinner with some of the free agents, and that was the main reason why he was oh, to the Knicks, oh. because he, had, he supposedly had all this cachet being – a uh, six-time, well, no, 11-time NBA coach that's won 11 championships, so he was going to be able to bring all these free agents to New York City, and you know that hasn't happened at all. Phil mm. Jackson, like I said, he can't even get to dinner with people. Couldn't get to dinner with Marcus Aldridge. Couldn't get to dinner with Durant. 
At least Pat Riley, he knew he had a bad team. At least he got to dinner with these people. Phil couldn't get to dinner with them. So he has absolutely brought nothing to the New York Knicks. He's made a lot of mistakes. I mean, Phil is so lazy. I was reading an article. I was reading an article when one of the GMs said that during the trading deadline period, they couldn't even get Phil Jackson on the telephone to discuss trades with him. He has been so lazy as a GM, and he's just sitting there collecting that money. At least <clears throat> Roddy Divock for the Sacramento Kings, Kings at least he's, he's made some bad decisions, but at least he's darn trying. That's the only thing I can say about it. He is trying. So, I mean, yeah, I don't think – I really don't think it's the fact that there's not good quality – um, players in the league. I think it's more of the management of the Kings and the Knicks. And I'm going to tell you something. I look to the Knicks management being worse than the Kings management, and that's ah. ain't a lot. Ah, ah, All right, Spitface. <laughs> you know ah, you don't ah, need to talk to me about the New York Knicks because I got ah, a lot ah, to say about them. <laughs> well, I, 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 I just uh, – now, I will say this one uh, commentary on the trade. And uh, 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 it, it, the trade – actually just don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter. Now, now, well, I put it like this. Let, let me rephrase it. It don't matter for Sacramento. <laughs> for the Pelicans, it, 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 we shall see. Okay? Uh, the Pelicans got a good player, so, hey, you know, it. we shall see if they can, you know, get the chemistry together there. But for Sacramento, it, it, it just don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> they are they, they and unfortunately the current Knicks management. There is no good move they can make. <laughs> you know, there's no bad. You know, it's just like just you know, uh, uh, these are two teams that what they really need is is man is ownership makeover. Mm. Okay, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, uh, 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 Cleveland Brown. How many GMs, coaches you going to get before you say the only person that ain't changed is the owner? Hmm. You know, uh, uh, now, uh, uh, hey, uh, Raider fan, Raider Nation, uh, I, I, okay, you can send me the hate mail right now. But you know it. You know it's true that the team didn't turn around to Al Davis died. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. That, okay, hey, now, now I go. Hey, I know ooh, the uh, the Raider. I, 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 I can see a bare skin, silver, uh, black with a patch flying my way. But hey, uh, uh, he had he had his day, and then he stretched it out, and then finally the old man went to that bigger, big uh, Super Bowl in the sky, and then they turned the team around. Mm-hmm. The Dallas Cowgirls, I mean Cowboys, I don't want to insult women. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, now, uh, Jay, uh, 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 the son and the daughter kind of started taking over. All of a sudden, playoffs, a quarterback that might be the future, a run, uh, you, what happened? The owner, so uh, it don't matter what the Knicks and Sacramento do until they get new owners. Now, uh, uh, you know, one of the things is, uh, you know, not being a person who played NBA or played basketball, it's hard for me to, uh, uh, on the sideline, to, to really say that the quality of players today uh, yesterday, better, worse, whatever. I will say different. And so you got players that represent how the rules of the game are for today. Mm. So they're the quality players. Now, if you want the rules of the game for for uh, 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 back when uh, Jordan was getting slapped, beat, swapped around until they, like, changed the rules and say, damn, <laughs> You are not allowed to karate the person as he goes down the court. You know, hey, you know, different kind of players, bad boys, all of that. 
Rules change. You get the quality of the player that goes with the rule. Now, if you like shooting, let's say let's say you like shooting. Oh, you got some sharp shooters in the NBA. Whoo, them boys. You know, you know. I I put it like this: they they uh, they need to hire them and put them in, in the military for sniper squads because they they'll got you, boy. Whoa. So you you got, and, and, and you got some players who they they will sky up and and your shot ain't going nowhere. So uh, I, I I think the quality of the player is uh it, it, it matches the way the game is today. And uh, you get nostalgic about you know about the past, but you know it it, it just you know hey it's different. Yeah, it, it, the, the management of those two teams is like you said. The owners, I mean, I mean the Sacramento Kings. That's a new owner, so he's new to the league. But James Dolan has been around a long time. But unlike, <laughs> look, unlike you at least try to, like you said, you try to get Vladi in Sacramento. You say, well, man, they, 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 they well, you like, know, hey, they Vladi is the GM. Um, I, I know I forgot his name right now. It begins with an R, but he's the owner of the Sacramento Kings. Uh, the thing is, though, um, like I said, it's hard to get rid of. It's hard to get rid of an owner, and we know that oh, yeah. from the Sterling and the Los Angeles Clippers. It's very hard to get rid of an owner. They have to be they have to really do something egregious to get rid of them. So I don't see them getting rid of these owners. So they need to get rid well, I know they can't get rid of you know like you can't do that. Yeah. But money talk. Yeah. It, is true. there somebody? Is there now? Look, is there some? Filthy rich New York Knicks fan who know he got the money. Come on, come on. You got to put your loyalty where your bucks is sometimes. There is some rich New York Knicks. I, and he might be Ab- Abba the Wabi. We'll take an Abba the Wabi. We like them folks that they got money. Please buy that franchise. I, I ain't even a Knicks fan, and I'm begging. Please, just, just, I just think everybody in the money league is begging for Dolan to go. Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, wave, you know, wave the money. Come on, man. Make it a lot. You know, this could be one of them 30-year investments that, you know, that, that you brought, you know, the, the Knicks back to glory and, you know, uh, uh, but... Uh, Come on, you got the money. Some of one of you rich folks got the money. Get it, get it. Get it, get it. It's been years of ineptitude. So anyway, spit face over to you. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years rocking my fears and putting suckers in fear, making the tears rain down like a mine soon. Listen to the bass go boom. Explosion overpowering over the competition. I'm towering, wrecking shop when I drop these lyrics that make you call the cops. Don't you dare stare, you better move. Don't ever compare me to the rest that are all get sliced and diced. Competition paying the price. I'm gonna knock you out. Huh. Mama said knock you out. Huh. We are not talking about Josephine Baker, Rudolph, Nariyev, or Jacqueline Cortez. We are talking about the knockout punch, a cutthroat, stone cold businessman who has made millions, if not billions, of dollars, and happens to be media and marketing, marketing savvy, who claims he can make the Lakers great again. Landed on Mitch and Jim. That's right. Y'all thought that we want to go. Oh no! Oh no! We 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 uh, things happen, but we was gonna comment about this. Now we knew President Trump was busy building walls so it could only be Magic Johnson, underrated businessman who has turned all his ventures magically into gold. Hmm. Can Mr. Johnson bring his Midas touch and bring you gold to the city of angels in the form of a dynasty? Which team will be back to prominence quicker, the Lakers or the Knicks? Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, and Dr. J are asking what you saying. First lady, you know, I, I, one thing I, 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 I must stress, Magic Johnson is an underrated businessman. He, he really is. And uh, he is, Magic Johnson got long green. See, people think that Magic Johnson making uh, money doing the announcing and the and the stuff on television, all of that. Uh, no, Magic Johnson, he getting paid. 
But that ain't where his money coming from. He just liked to do that. See, that's when you know somebody got money. When when they're going, yeah, you know, I, okay, you know, I want to, you know, and no, no, and you know, he, you know, I want to get paid, what you know, you supposed so he be, you know, because it's business, but he like he ain't got to do that. He got other money <laughs> and other <laughs> deals he done made that he like. Look, I ain't got to do that. Now I, I'm on television doing announcing and stuff because the first go round I could I spoke worse than a a, a Mississippi farmer from 1933. So I just wanted to prove to y'all that I I could, you know, I, I mean, now if you listen to Magic Johnson speak, my man that got rather eloquent in his way. Now, he ain't Barack Obama, you know, now, so we ain't going to go all out like that, Magic. But but Magic a smooth operator, you know, uh, on the airways. And uh, uh, and you can tell that's how he be operating in the business world. So. Uh, what I'm looking at is is that Mr. Stone Cold Businessman, hmm, yeah, I remember all the movie theaters. They was pretty nice. <laughs> uh, 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 is going to bring his Midas touch to the Lakers. Because unlike a certain uh, uh, guy in New York, who uh, is too lazy and sucking up money? Oh no, uh, there are players. They they like Magic Johnson. They they still look at Magic and go, man, you know. And they realize he a cold, cold stone businessman that made money off the NBA, kept making money off the, uh, still making money out the NBA and making more money on his side business. Now, uh, they got a lot, a lot of – players got a lot of respect uh, for Magic Johnson, and they want to be part of the go. They want to be part of the go. Now, uh, 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 the problem with the Lakers was sometimes you got to kick family to the club. <laughs> sometimes you you sometimes and, and it's hard you know you know folks getting all up on you should have been just fired your brother you try find your brother <laughs> you, yeah 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 try find your brother now uh, okay because uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know I I can get you know you know auntie uh, uh, auntie Shirley uh, now I don't see why you you had to find your brother. You know he can't do no nothing else. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, you know, you go get, you know, it ain't go, you know, and it's like, you know, Auntie, you know, well, you know, he was, you know, Auntie was just, you know, fuck it up. <laughs> I had to let him go, Auntie. <laughs> he he was down at the strip bar doing doing the games. We can't keep having that, Bob, Auntie. Well, you know how he is now. Y'all supposed to watch out. Well, I, I gave him thirty million. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first lady, like I said. <laughs> oh boy, it's a lot to say about that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, the genie uh, bus. Yeah, that was the best thing she did was to get rid of her brother and get rid of Mitch Kupchak. You know, Mitch Kupchak, he had a great run as the GM, but when he and um, um, Jim Buss got together, that was the downfall of the Lakers. Mm. And Magic Johnson, I mean, what can you say about Magic Johnson? You're right. He has never failed in business. Mm. So the NBA is a business. So I don't see him failing as running the the Lakers, you know, because he is a great businessman. You're right. He's underrated. And, yeah, he has mega but millions for running business. You know, I, you know, it's funny. I mean, you know, my, my side job, I used to be in the healthcare business. Just to realize Magic Johnson is also involved with Sodexo, Sodexo Company, which does the uh, food services for a lot of hospitals. He has a part in that company. A lot of there's a lot of things Magic Johnson is involved in besides movie theaters, <laughs> owning the part of the. Um, I, I, the he Los sold Angeles the Dodgers. movie theater. He he cashed yeah. out. I know. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So so yeah, he goes in 
runs the business, gets up, gets get people around him. That's the key for Magic Johnson. He knows how to get the right people around him and surround him to make good business ventures. And so I don't see any difference with the Lakers. You know, he had already hired uh, Rob Palinka to be his GM, and, and I'm fortunate a lot of African American GMs, future GMs had a problem with that because they thought Magic Johnson should have hired a black man. He don't need to hire a black man. He just want to hire the right person for the job. He is a black man. So he, <laughs> he, he's already there. He's in charge of the president. He's the president of basketball <laughs> operation. Okay? So, a matter of fact, at this point in time, it's only he and um, Michael Jordan holds those positions in the NBA as black um, presidents of operation. So, so the fact that he hired this, former um, agent, sports agent, to, to run the GM role is great because, you know, he knows the business of dealing with the collective and bargain agreement, dealing with negotiations, so he's going to be great. It's, it's no doubt to me that uh, Magic Johnson is going to bring the Lakers back to prominence, prominence before the New York Knicks because Jeannie Buss did what she needed to do. I don't see James Dolan doing what he needs to do. Matter of fact, I just read recently that they're going to continue with Phil Jackson. So Phil Jackson is not opting out of his contract, and James Dolan is not going to um, force him to opt out of his contract. So that's bad news for the New York Knicks. And the fact that they may re-sign him after the 2018 season, oh, I'll tell you right now, I know I need to go look for another team. So maybe I'm going to root for the Lakers now. Maybe I'll join the Lakers because, you know, I love Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson was one of my favorite basketball players of all time. So I have a reason now to leave the New York Knicks because now I can root for the Lakers again. And um, now I don't know if Magic's going to bring them a dynasty because all the Laker Nation care about is for the Lakers to get into the playoffs. But I will tell you this, the Lakers will definitely be a better franchise because Magic Johnson is the president right now. So – Kudos to Jeannie Buss. Yeah, you're right. It's hard to fire family, but sometimes you can't do right by family. So that's the reason why she had to tell Jim Buss to get the hell on out of here. And she did the right thing. So kudos to Jeannie Buss. So we look for the Lakers to come back. Knicks fans, there's nothing more to say about the Knicks. They are trending <laughs> downward, downward, oh, downward. Oh, downward. God. Downward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, will it? Uh, Will will it be a fire sale for the Knicks? Because there is one rule: no matter what business you in, money talk. And if you ain't no longer making the money, it's gonna be some talking. All right, first lady, please take us to break. The first two listeners to email us or send a shout out why our knockout artist is artist. Our group together will receive a $25 gift card from our partners at NFLShop.com and a $25 gift card from our new partner, Victoria's Secret. Now, your hint is they cut a mean rug. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we'll have a performance from Mikolai on the first part of Shout Out. Mikolai. Music flows in from around the globe to get a shout out from the panel. First lady, I can't wait to hear the music from Nikolai. <laughs> On shout out, we feature new independent artists who are looking to find their shining star. If we like what we hear, we'll give the track a shout out. If we don't like it, we hit the mute. Today, yes, we do have Make a lie with his album, Idle Stranger. DJ, let's hear the title track, Idle Stranger. Don't let it get in. Let's go 
only ones who can do this why it's not for me Cause I'm dying in the night Don't really get this So take this final chance Don't break my heart I fail So hit me now Cause I don't want to be left by you too Yeah, I don't want to be left by you I told you now that I don't want to feel the last of you And I don't want to feel the last of you And I don't want to feel the last of you And I don't want to feel the last of you And I don't want to feel the last of you Learn to forget this Please in your life can show you not from your spirit to look at your spirit Try to surround me So take this final chance shout out to I see what she's saying that it was 80s but um, I, I still kind of enjoyed the song um, you know I'd actually like music from the 80s so I'm going to shout it out I like the 80s I'm with the 80s <laughs> okay well if you like what you heard from Nicole, Mick, Mickelai, check him out at www dot m i c c o l i dot c o dot u k, and we wish him the best. But on part two of Shadow, we're going to get a double dose because we're going to hear from another artist, and his name is Jeff Gutman. All right. Now, speaking of my sound and music, is that the sound of my favorite underwater friend? Is it time for flip it? Than he. 
And Kana has a clear shot to upset Floyd Money Mayweather. Now, I know many of you boxing aficionados are probably sitting up there going, no way in hell is Conor McGregor going to beat Floyd Money Mayweather. And you may be right. He may not beat Floyd Money Mayweather, but he does have a clear shot to upset. Floyd Money Mayweather, and I'll tell you why. Buster Douglas. <laughs> That's right. Buster Douglas. Hey, if you a pro and you in the ring, you got a shot. You got a shot. And Floyd Money Mayweather been sitting back, you know, counting all that cabbage he got off of uh uh, off of Pac-Man after he stretched it out so long that uh, he knew he could like sit back and win that fight. <laughs> but now he dealing with somebody who coming from the you know from the cutthroat MMF MMA world, kicking and kneeing and elbowing and all of that. Now uh, Connor is losing. Half his tools, because anything below the waist he cannot use. But he knows how to elbow. He knows how to rough him up, get him tangled up in there. And he got a good punch. Floyd, don't take him lightly. He got a clear shot to upset you. Buster Douglas. First lady, defense. Well, you're right about that, because Conor McGregor definitely has a puncher's chance to upset Floyd Mayweather because, let's face it, Floyd is going to come into this fight so overconfident that, A, he will not prepare the same way that he has prepared for his other fights, and he will be out of shape, and B, Floyd is going to fight a different style that he he is normally accustomed to because, you know, Floyd is known as a counterpuncher. But he will try to prove that Connor should not have even been in this fight, and Floyd is going to try to be the aggressor and try to knock him out. And we all know that's not Floyd's style. So Floyd is going to be not his normal style of, of counterpunching. Has a great punch. So I think that's the, he's going to have an opportunity to upset Mayweather. I mean, May, McGregor has nothing to lose, but Floyd has everything to lose. And McGregor can be relentless, and he is a good puncher. And with Floyd Mayweather being overconfident, this is a making for an upset. <clears throat> All right. Okay. The making of an upset. All right. Well, you know this is flipping, so we're going to flip the script and have the panel defend. Connor only has a shot if he is fighting Freddie Roach. And I got Roach. <laughs> now, uh, uh, this is one, translating your uh, MMA, uh, MMF, uh, all that other stuff skills to a sport that has defined rules. You know, boxing, there are defined rules for how you box. And there are certain things that uh, that are not allowed, which makes it a challenge. Now, there, there are things in boxing, you know, like the uh, 
as they say, the game inside the game. And that's where, you know, people like Angelo Dundee, you know, said, like, uh, the, the, the sweet science, you know, the sweet science of boxing. And uh, uh, there's, a, 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 there's more to, you know, MMA has it's, it, 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 the way you fight. There's a certain way you do it. But boxing, you got to be able to go round after round with, with, with where you are scoring points a certain way. You know, there's a certain way you score in boxing. And if you have not had that type of training, yeah, you can get out there and mix it up. And then, you know, Mayweather, you know, just sit up there and do, uh, hey, he's a counter puncher. And, uh, hey, he know how to put the arms up. Okay, yeah, flop, flop. You ain't scoring no punch. And then he, bop, he get a point. So he can dip and nip you and, you know, hit you. And he's steadily scoring points. And he ain't sweat. He ain't broke a sweat. And and kind of get out there and, and, and get too aggressive. He going to be on the carpet. Because, <laughs> you know, I put it like this. Money Mayweather ain't known for being the knockout artist. But I think that kind of is not going to know how to protect himself from them counter punches. And uh, 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 like I said, uh, uh, now I put it like this. Okay, uh, I, I wouldn't put my money on Freddie, Freddie Roach, but I'm looking hard if he can handle Buster Douglas. First lady. To see. <laughs> well, you, you're right about one thing to say. There are rules with boxing, and Conor McGregor, like you said, MMA is completely different in boxing. You know, McGregor hasn't gone – 12 rounds. The MMA is only three rounds. So first of all, his conditioning will come into question when he's being hit by a uh, counterpunch by uh, Mayweather. So the, the fact that whether or not he can last 12 rounds. But the main thing for me is Conor McGregor has no shot of winning this fight because Floyd Mayweather has to protect his legacy. I mean, mm. he has to protect that. If he allows McGregor to beat him, He'll never be able to defend his 49-0 record. You know, Mayweather will take this fight serious because to lose to McGregor would be uh, would be very devastating to Mayweather. I mean, mm. your first loss would be to an MMA fighter. I mean, come mm. on now, you can't allow that. He wouldn't even allow that. So um, Conor McGregor has no shot at being Mayweather. And the one thing too, Mayweather can't happen have happened is a decision. He is going to have to knock out McGregor because, again, we're talking about an MMA fighter. And uh, he has to prove a point that Conor should not have been in this fight and should he even question the ability to beat Money Mayweather. So Floyd will definitely have to knock him out, and I believe he will knock him out. And I can't wait for this fight, spit face, so Mayweather can shut up that loudmouth Conor McGregor. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, all right, okay. You heard the defense from the first lady who get who gets the last word. Please take us to break. Stay tuned. Up next, we have the funnies and our favorite underwater friend on Flip It Part Two. Let's get that fight on because I'm ready for the rumble. Go Buster. Go Buster. <laughs> all right. Still listening to bras, panties, and sports. It's time for the funnies. All right, Spitface, over to you. I, I, I've been sitting up here, First Lady, the production's assistants. They go all around the world, and I think we got a little something interesting today. Man stopped that red light, used a slingshot to take out the traffic cameras. <laughs> <laughs> A driver stopped at a traffic light in China, was recorded leaning out the window of his van and using a slingshot to take out a traffic camera. The CCTV traffic camera footage shows the man identified by the surname Lee stopped at a Shanghai red light in his blue minivan. Lee can be seen reaching a slingshot out of the van's window and using it to shatter the camera's lens. The impressive shot earned Lee an arrest from local police. He told officers he lost his temper because he had been waiting a long time for the light to change. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
I, I, now, first lady, first off, I, I'm going, look, they should not be arresting Lee. They need to hire Lee to teach they, they military out of Because that boy, got, he obviously got, he means with that, that solution. My man got some aim. He need to be training. They, they special forces, you know, on how to target. Because if Lee can whip out a slingshot and whap it, you know, you, you, you got to make use of that person. <laughs> but what, what I don't understand is, that, did he take out the camera or take out the actual traffic light? Because he said he was waiting too long for the night. So what does the camera have to do with the traffic light? That's what I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to no, understand. No, he took it. out the traffic camera. I, I, I don't know I don't if it was intentional. Maybe he was going to hit the camera and then hit the light, you know. But, I don't but know, either but way, he you was, know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's going to bring back some old time weaponry, but weapons. Okay. Yes, you know. But but then but then other the part David Goliath, David would be very proud of him. <laughs> I, I just want to know how many folks in China have a last name of Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he don't have to worry about you know, you know, it ain't like, you know, it ain't like, you know, you know, it ain't like the traffic light was taken out by uh, uh, Mr. Uh, 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 Mr. Alvarez uh, uh, Smith, you know, where you go, oh, I know them Alvarez Smith, Lee, <laughs> but this the this the L I Lee. <laughs> Not the L E E Lee or the L E Lee. Did that? Uh, this is uh, you know. All right. Now, uh, if gosh darn and water is splashing on you, it must be time for our favorite underwater friend. It's time for flip it. Well, host the fan appointed and then flip the script and defend the opposing view. There is a lot of talk about the value of Jimmy. Garoppolo as a starter on a team that needs a starting QB. Given the history of QBs who leave the Patriots, is it wise to give up a lot to get him? Our real question is whether Garoppolo should do everything he can to stay back up to Tom Brady a la Aaron Rodgers. Panel defend. Jimmy has, has to get the money while the money is there to be got. Jimmy should leave. Now, first lady, I'm looking at this, and I'm going with the fact that NFL careers are, are, are short and sweet. Not necessarily sweet, but, uh, because, but they are short. You, you rarely have someone playing 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, uh, you, you may not, uh, 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 given the, you know, the, the, the physical nature of the sport, I think most players are like gone in like three, four years, uh, injuries, and we ain't talking about something devastating, uh, ankle, this, that. You could just be out. And uh, you have to maximize your money as you can maximize it. Now, I, I know a lot of folks are saying, wow, you know, now you could, uh, uh, Tom Brady has got to be a better model than Brett Favre was for Aaron Rodgers. And He's being coached up in ways that I'll just say better than Aaron Rodgers was in the Brett Favre situation. Now, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, it, it, it would be amazing if he has Aaron Rodgers' talent. See, that's the thing, okay? So uh, now if it appeared that he had Aaron Rodgers' talent, and he was trapped behind uh, uh, Tom Brady, okay, uh, it, it, it would be like, look, you got to go get the money. But here's the thing. If you ain't got Aaron Rodgers' money, you got to get the money. You really got to get the money. Because before they figure out that you ain't got the talent that we think that you might have, get your money, Jimmy. Uh, and if you happen to have Aaron Rodgers' talent, Go with it, but you know, let her rip, and uh, you know, let her rip. You know, be up there, compete. Hope, hope, hope you meet your old team in the Super Bowl. But if you ain't got Aaron Rodgers talent, get the money while you can. <laughs> First lady over to you, the fan. Well, uh, 
Since, since we kind of saying the same thing, you know, Jimmy G, because, you know, Garoppolo, I'm not even going to try to say the last name, but anyway, Jimmy G, is, is he sitting in the catbird seat? Because, you know, when his contract ex- expires at the end of 2017 season, every team that's needing a quarterback wants his services. He will be able to demand a top-notch salary, even though he's only played a total of 17 games in three years. Why? Because he plays for the New England Patriots. And if Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots drafted him, he must be good. And that's what teams are going to be going by because they really don't know how great of a quarterback Jimmy G is, you know, because he does have such a small body of work to judge him. But you got to believe that if the Patriots drafted him, he is good. And, you know, for Jimmy G, money is king, so he needs to get paid. And like you kind of said, he really needs to get the money before teams really know what type of quarterback he really is. Because Jimmy G, hey, he could definitely be the next Brock Osweiler. I mean, in terms, in terms, in terms of getting the wait a minute, in terms of getting paid, not being a good, not being a good, okay. I, 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 I kind of hate, to, I gotta hate to hear his name in the same breath as Brock Osweiler. I'm like, yeah, oh, but God. Osweiler got paid, so that's what Osweiler did. Yeah. Osweiler got paid, so that's what Jimmy G needs to do. Mm-mm. All right, we're going to flip the, the script. Panel defend. Jimmy sitting behind a legend can pay huge dividends. Just as discount double-check Aaron. Cool your heels and let the other guy take the hits. Stay a backup to Brady. And now uh, 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 many would say that, Jimmy, go get the money now. Go get the money now. You, uh, uh, you'll never be as valuable as you are right now. That is not necessarily true. And the reason is, is that, and I'm going to bring it up, Brock. Oswald. No team wants to make the mistake the the Houston Texans did and overpaying for a quarterback who really had a limited body of work and then when they weren't in the same system folded like an old tent during a hurricane. No team wants to do that. Now, the other thing is, First Lady, is that it, if you look at players who lead the Patriots, no matter how good the deal is, the Patriots always get the better end of the deal because they know what they really got versus what they want presented for you thinking what they got. <laughs> they are the masters at, you know, the only thing – Worse than getting an ex-Patriots player is getting an ex-Dallas Cowboy player. <laughs> it, you never get the player they were on that team. And that's why they willing to let them go. Now, Jimmy, I, I, I'm going to uh, – the advantage for Jimmy uh, is this, is that there is a good chance that the Patriots will repeat and go back to the Super Bowl. And he is going to get to play in additional games next season. Now, Jimmy get to play one or two games, get to come in, show a little more body of work, get one more ring, they will be salivating to get him. And the stench, did I say the stench? The stench. I would say the funk, but see, that would be like, you know, a good thing. <laughs> the stench of Brock Osweiler's d- deal will be way in the past. And the other thing is the really bad teams, they're getting a the quarterback this year. <laughs> First lady, defend. 
Oh, well, you're absolutely right, uh, Spitface. Um, Jimmy, Jimmy G's, he, he really needs to really evaluate this situation and look at it from this point of view. Is a bird in hand better than a bird in the bush? The bird in hand is the Patriots. And you know where you, what you have with the Patriots. They know <laughs> you. They love you. And the bird in the bush, that's a bad team because that's who's going to be drafting. <laughs> that's who's going to be getting you is a bad team. So you're better off being the next Aaron Rodgers and waiting your turn. I mean, you you sit behind um, Tom Brady. You're learning from the best quarterback in the world, and 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 that's such that's such valuable lessons to learn from Tom Brady because that's something you can um, take forward with your career. And Tom, let's face it, Tom says he's going to play for a few more years. I, I give Tom probably about three more years. Give him three more years. So, Jimmy G, it's not that long of a wait. And you remember one thing, you can always be in the Super Bowl contention if you're staying with the Patriots. It's going to another team, going to the Cleveland Browns, going to um, the tennis, not Tennessee, going to Jacksonville Jaguars. I mean, these are losing teams. These are teams that you don't want to be. So I mm. believe that you just need to stay back, wait your turn, and you'll get your chance in a few years because the Patriots already know you and they know what you can bring to the table. So leaving for more money, Jimmy G, is not always the best thing. And as you already indicated, Smith Faith, you can learn from Brock Osweiler. Money isn't everything. <laughs> your reputation is more your reputation is more valuable. <laughs> Especially when you ain't got no skills. I <laughs> that 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 boy ain't got. I I I I'm like you know. I I almost think that uh that that the Texans should call the police because <laughs> they got robbed. They, <laughs> they got, got robbed. robbed. The highway robbery. Ooh, but it's all their own fault. Robbed. I mean you yeah. know they. Get, Woo, talk about getting tucked into the cleanest, but uh, we shall see. First Lady, please take us to break. On the other side of the break, as we indicate, we'll have a performance from Jeff Gutman on Shout Out. Please stay tuned. In sports, it's time for Shout Out Part 2 and the finale. First Lady, over to you. We have a performance, another performance from Jeff Gutman on with his album Arise. So DJ, I know that music flows around the globe, so let's hear the music from Jeff Gutman Arise.
Okay, so that was Jeff Gutman with Arise. So, Spencer, are you shouting that out or are you going to hit the mute button? I'm giving it a shout out. I I thought it was, uh, uh, really, I thought it was a lovely song. I, 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 it made me, it put me in the, 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 uh, the, the, the back in the time when you had, uh, I, I'm trying, I was, and you had them Fleetwood Mac kind of cuts, you know, yeah. back in the day, you know, and uh, and and you know, and they and they put it together well. So I, I I'm going with that. Well, you know, I would even go further back. <laughs> you you went to Fleetwood Mac. I'm gonna go back to Peter. Was it Peter Paul and Mary? <laughs> You remember Peter You're going Paul back and Mary. to Peter Paul and Mary. You, I, I'm going so you back go to try Peter to Paul and Mary. I'm aging with the mamas right now, and papas on me. Okay, all right, I, all right. I, I, I'm leaving on the jet plane. I'm leaving on the jet plane. That song reminds <laughs> us that they are right. <laughs> all right. But anyway, I'm going to shout it out too, though. <laughs> it seemed like one of those conscientious, very um, – Back in the day, those type of music, Peter, Paul, and Mary, uh, 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 what was her name? Uh, Lord, I haven't forget. Oh, uh, gosh, I can't remember her name right now. When, you know, when, when people talked about them. <laughs> yeah, when, when, when people talked about social things, and, and that's what that song, Mariah, reminds me of. So I'm going to shout it out. All right, Jeff Gutman, kudos to you. Well, that's the end of the shout out. If you like what you heard from Mr. Jeff Gutman, check him out at Jeff Gutman. Dot com. That's J-E-F-F-G-U-T-M-A-N dot com. If you like what you heard or have any comments, you can send your emails and tracks to panties at oldgrumpyradio.com. Well, we don't have picks this week because we will be starting our hardball picks. Um, the producers have decided they wanted to kick it off 
near the beginning of the March Madness to make it spicy. And the madness is it, 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 quickly approaching first. And actually, yes, that's the is. hard word, hard word. We had to tell the producers to get they, get they script writers. Together. Oh, that's right. Hardball that's is like, the hard Right, word. right. It's the hard, the hard word. word. <laughs> you know, the hard word don't get good until, after, until the March Madness done started. Right. And we can see who really, you know, who's a pretender or a contender. Uh <clears throat> All right, so now it's time for our outrageous predictions. Spitface, what's your outrageous outrageous prediction for this week? You know, I, my outrageous prediction for this week is that there uh, is that the my outrageous prediction is that the San Antonio Spurs will go on a four-game winning streak. <laughs> Is that outrageous? That's, that's your hey, outrageous? They play, in the, they play in the West. Four games straight? Okay, 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 six. Okay, six. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it six games. Four games is not that difficult for the... Six the, games, uh, six the, games. The, the, okay. Well, see, I'm going to take it a little bit further because my outrageous prediction is that San Antonio Spurs will make it to the finals. The Warriors will not be in the finals. Yes, you heard it. The San Antonio Spurs will make it to the NBA Western Conference Finals. They'll come out of the West to play the Cleveland Cavaliers. Sorry, no KD. Got to move with that outrageous prediction. Okay, so this week, quote, comes from our little darling, four-time gold medalist, gymnast, Simone Biles. Quote, I'd rather regret the risk that I didn't work out than the chances I didn't take at all. Let me repeat that. I'd rather regret the risk that didn't work out than the chances I didn't take at all. That's right. So I agree with Simone Biles. It's better to take risks and you can succeed. All right. Please enjoy the poetic performance at the end of the show. This has been Cheryl Smith with Spitface, and you have been listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. Looking back, it seems it's all a dream. I'm not just saying this will be. Being mean, it's just my story and it's just my side. Sit back sometime, cause it's going to take a while. Looking back, it seems it's all a dream. I'm not just saying this for being mean. It's just my story and it's just my side. Sit back sometime, cause it's going to take a while. I can't sleep at night. I ain't thinking right, redeem me, because I pawned my life somehow, now ransom is due. She had it all, reverence with no consequence, so it seemed, none of her actions seemed binding, so it seemed, guided with no responsibility as my world fails me, sounds like redemption, redemption like Egyptian days, orange sun, warm sand, Hebrews scorn like Moses coming down from the mountain, African slave like Hebrew, you've been warned, sounds like like redemption, redemption like gang fights, territorial, same struggle, different bubble, mothers huddle to comfort one another. Sounds like redemption, redemption like mom and daddy had a fight last night, woke up, no eyesight, cook breakfast like everything was all right. Sounds like redemption, redemption like sending our boys overseas to fight, doing it for our country, don't make it right, because family still can't sleep at night. Sounds like redemption, redemption like pop it didn't have it. You're no longer in the baby carriage. Fly, little birds, fly. fly. Forcing you to move forward. Three weeks, no phone call. You pissed off, she pays for it. Because just like mama, she gives up her mortgage. And daddy don't even know it. Sounds like redemption. I want my daughters back. White and black. Mesmerized by crack. Used to be fat. 
P-H-A-T, pretty hot and tempting, sounds like redemption. Redemption like I want my innocence back. He stole it, she know it, and she always knew that. Now she's raising a stepdaughter slash granddaughter. Water under the bridge, hell no, manslaughter. Sounds like redemption, redemption like new world order. Bartering won't be enough, slaughtering will be a must, survival will be tough. Sounds like redemption, redemption like persecution with no conscience, prosecution with no haunches. He died for no one's death. Let your child go to jail for accidental death. Jesus' love put to the test. Sounds like redemption. Redemption like ten words or less. Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. If he can forgive, so can you. Sounds like redemption. Looking back, it seems it's all a dream. I'm not just saying this for being mean. It's just my story and it's just my side. Sit back sometime because it's going to take a while. Looking back, it seems it's all a dream. I'm not just saying this for being mean. It's just my story and it's just my side. Sit back sometime because it's going to take a while. Redemption. 